So if you've been following uh, my conversations and my features with Lee Scott here from Starag, we've been talking about the aerospace sector, um, specific ma machining materials, and also areas of the uh, aircraft that are made using Starag's machines. And in fact, that's exactly what we're talking about today with um, a very important part, which is the landing gear. Now, this is something that I've seen at IMTS and EMO, which you demonstrate um, a, a really nice part, but. What, how do you go about making them, Lee, and, and what machines do you use? Well, well, first of all, it's an absolutely critical part of the aircraft, isn't it? I mean, when, when you look at an aircraft and you look at the number of people on it, the, number of, the amount of luggage, the weight of the aircraft itself, and it's going to hit the ground hard, that piece of equipment's got a big job to do, so it's got to be right. So the materials that landing gear systems are made of are very, very... Um, very tough, resilient materials. Um, you know, we, we've talked about titanium in the past. Landing gear tends to be made from a, a different grade of titanium than your, 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 your ribs, if you like, and, and, and your brackets are made of. And it's also made from steels as well. Dif different um, di different uh, types of aircraft use different materials. So complex shapes, quite difficult to machine, and combining a lot of milling for us also with very high precision holes. And has that material been, been made and designed in order to get maximum strength for the, for the operation of, of course, the landing, like you say? Yeah, sure it has. And, and, and the design of the, the particular uh, components as well are designed for maximum strength. And they're difficult to machine in places as well. There's always tricky features on a on a landing gear component that you've really got to get into with your, with your tools. Because they design it in the best way for the aircraft to be able to, to, to handle a landing, don't they? They don't worry about how you're going to no, make it. That's <laughs> you know? right. um, you see, when, when you take the ones I've seen, they look like they're turned, but they're not. They're, they're, they're milled as well, aren't they? The interpolation. I mean, how do you keep the kind of concentricity and all of those precision elements by doing it in this particular way? Some of them are turned, and if you've got a, a landing gear that, that's basically just a, a tubular type shape, you would put that maybe on a mill turn type machine. But as soon as you get a leg sticking out and you can't rotate it effectively on a lathe, it has to be milled. And if you look at the type of milling then, it, it's almost like a mold and die type job. It, it's a button mill profiling type job with, with some five axis. But then you've also, um, to, to make it pay, in a single setup, you've then got to get round and put the holes in in very, very accurate positions, very tight tolerances, often with quite complex hole features, multi diameter, undercuts, all that sort of stuff. So, and, and which of your machines do you use for making these then? And what, what are those challenges that you face during the machining process with such you know, different material potentially? If, 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 if you go to Many landing gear producers worldwide, you, you'll find a, a, a Droop and Rhine FOGS machine or, or, or several of them there. So for the large uh, landing gear systems, it, it's, uh, it, it's a strong market for us. For the small and medium, uh, we're also using Starag and, and also Hecate machines for producing landing gear as well. So um, sort of metre and a half and, and down would be Starag and Hecate. And, and upwards would be FOGS. Uh, one of the most challenging parts of an aircraft to be made, do you think? Depends who you speak to, but yes, it's up there. But for you guys, bread and butter. Bread and butter. Yeah, good stuff. So if you're interested in anything to do with aerospace machining, then uh, visit our YouTube channel or the MTD CNC website where we're doing a series of videos all about not just the parts that are on an aircraft, but the materials that are mach machined and handled as well. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you very much.